Okay, I'm really glad we're going to talk about this one. This one's one of my favourites. You went from here, which was the scene in Arizona, to this painting. You said you used some new techniques. What were the new techniques you used? Well, obviously when you are increasing the scale of the surface that you're working on, um, you have to really consider matching the size of the tools to the size of that surface. I mean, it's, it's not hard and fast. I mean, I could, I could work on a surface like that with very, very small tools and you'd get a certain effect. But I wanted this very strong sense of, of uh, vertical movement or vertical effect, vertical spacing. And I also wanted to have some consistency across the painting as well. So that meant I had to start experimenting with um, spatulas, and tools with long edges, like squeegees. Right. And I knew by doing that, scaling up the tool and working with the paint would give me this overall effect that I was looking for. So. Is um, the actual sort of 3D quality, the, the fact that you can see the paint standing out and the, the, the lines of the squeegee and the scrape marks, mm. and it's all standing out, is that important to you? It's because it's not just a flat surface. Well. I'll be honest with you, I, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted out, uh, in terms of actual physical 3D effect. Because in a way you've got two things, you've got the real three-dimensional effect, you've got shadow, you've got paint which is proud of a surface and that's actual three-dimensional effect. But particularly with large paintings, you, you, you also get um, almost a virtual three-dimensional effect because of the way, uh, say the tones, or the colour harmonies work. Certain colours will come forward, other colours will recede. Uh, recede. Some colours will, will just sort of stick at the same level that they're at anyway, like a neutral level. So in a way, you are coordinating an actual 3D uh, visual effect with a virtual spatial effect because of the uh, workings of colour. So launching into this painting, I knew that I'd be building up surfaces. There are a number of different layers in this painting. So I knew I was going to get some kind of actual three-dimensional effect. Was I, what I wasn't entirely sure about was the harmony and balance right. between an actual three-dimensional effect and then this, this virtual, which is how I'm describing it, a visual effect of depth. And so obviously the, the warmer colours, these, these, these pinky browns on here, that have actually had quite, quite a lot of yellow mixed into them, reference the original source of areas of panel that were actually that colour. But I've, I've had to adapt those somewhat to, to get them to be sufficiently balanced and coordinated with the neutral areas so they're not so strong that they're coming so hard and fast towards you that they leave everything else behind. Similarly, if they weren't warm enough, they would be too neutral and, and they would be set back, which wasn't the effect I wanted either. The blacks help because obviously the, the, the blacks in it, which again are faithful to the source, so I've got, that, I've got that there that I can use, work very nicely to, to anchor those warm colours in the painting. But the techniques of using the uh, squeegees mean that I could get these consistent vertical uh, lines um, put on surface layer by surface layer by surface layer until I reached a point where I felt um, the painting worked as a piece in its own right.